to be witnessed in Europe with its solemn curfew on Easter Eve and the ceremonial striking at the new holy fire. It is said that stores make their highest sales at Christmas time and the season is a very profitable time for companies where people frantically buy gifts to please family and friends. But even though most Christians in the West will fanatically defend it, giving no scriptural support, who is it really in honour of? The Canadian-born Freemason, Manly Palmer Hall, who is considered as one of the most respected esoteric scholars in the 20th century, tells us its pagan roots. For reasons which they doubtless considered sufficient, those who chronicled the life and act of Jesus found it advisable to metamorphize him into a solar deity. Sun worship played an important part in nearly all the pagan mysteries. The pagans set aside the 25th of December as the birthday of the solar man. They rejoiced, feasted, gathered in processions and made offerings in the temple. In fact, the merrymaking is rooted in paganism. The Bible never gives an exact date for Jesus' birth. So when the Christian church adopted December 25th, it was superimposing a Christian festival on a previously held pagan one, says Richard Heinberg, author of Celebrate the Solstice. The Roman winter solstice, says Tyler, as celebrated on December 25th, in connection with the worship of the sun god Mithra, appears to have been instituted in this special form by Aurelian about AD 273. And to this festival, the day owes its opposite name of the birthday of the unconquered sun, with full symbolic appropriateness, though not with historical justification, the day was adopted in the Western Church where it appears to have been generally introduced by the 4th century. The sun dominated nearly every feast in the pre-Christian occult world. On December 21st, the winter solstice, the ancients believed that the sun died and on December 25th it had its rebirth. But the ancients also had sacred trees it was like their own tree of life, which they revered and held sacred. In the 2009 film Avatar, pagan tree worship is connected with the spirits and ancestor worship, and it was one of the animus customs of many pagan tribes. This is a place for prayers to be heard, and sometimes answered. The voices of our ancestors. The Bible forbids any revering for pagan tree worship. For God wanted his people to be distinct from the world and not be manipulated by the movements of the sun in the heavens. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Today Christian pastors, so-called evangelists, scholars, and teachers, are now telling their congregations that Jeremiah is not talking about the Christmas tree though the language is so clear and they are encouraging their flock to purchase the trees and to celebrate Christmas. But even the secular world knows that the Christmas tree is tied to paganism 
and spirit worship. Even Jesus says in Luke chapter 16 and verse 8 to paraphrase, the secular world are more wiser than the children of light. Mistletoe, caroling, even Christmas trees were tied to the solstice. Celtic cultures believed that mistletoe's golden berries hold the fire of the sun, and Christmas trees are a vestige of pagan tree worship. Having Christmas trees again hark back to the pagans. They decorated the evergreen trees with decorations, food and runes to keep the spirits close to their villages. The Christian authorities tried for years to stamp this out, so the pagans merely took their trees indoors, which is why we are still doing it to this day. Who is Santa Claus and how does he tie into the Winter Solstice Sun Festival? He is usually portrayed as an oversized, big bearded figure who gives children gifts and in modern times he has been made popular through the marketing of Coca-Cola. Listen to the voice of the secular world. Saturn, the old man who lives at the North Pole and brings with him to the children of men a sprig of evergreen, the Christmas tree, is familiar to the little folks under the name of Santa Claus, for he brings each winter the gift of the new year. Even Saint Nick has solstice origins. Santa Claus comes down to us with shamanistic characteristics. He flies through the air and he carries a magic sack on his back. But Easter and Christmas are not the only memorials to the sun. There is one more that the majority of Christians around the world keep that can be traced to the Roman religion of Mithraism. Manly Palmer Hall gives a clear and detailed account of this last homage to the sun. Alexander Wilder in his Philosophy and Ethics of the Zoroastrians states that Mithras is the Zend title for the sun. There are many points of resemblance between Christianity and the cult of Mithras. The Encyclopedia Britannica makes the following statement concerning the Mithraic and Christian mysteries. The sanctification of Sunday and of the 20th of December, the immortality of the soul, these are some of the resemblances which, whether real or only apparent, enabled Mithraism to prolong its resistance to Christianity. The Vatican has made a number of statements which has pushed for the preservation of this Mithraic day of rest, a day that Jesus never gave no disciple instruction to keep in memorial of his resurrection. In 1998, the late Pope John Paul II published a document to preserve this day. It was called Dies Domini, which translated is the Day of the Lord, where he bigs up both Sunday and the seventh day Sabbath of creation. The fundamental importance of Sunday has been recognized through 2000 years of history and was emphatically restored by the Second Vatican Council. The Sabbath has therefore been interpreted evocatively as a determining element in the kind of sacred architecture of time. It recalls that the universe and history belongs to God. The Irish American Catholic prelate Cardinal James Gibbons, Bishop of Baltimore, made a very powerful statement in his 1876 apologetics, The Faith of Our Fathers. He was no ordinary Catholic bishop. He was a powerful towering presence in United States politics. In this picture he stands in the center where he prays for President McKinley on the left and Admiral Dewey on the right in 1899. He was also very close with President Theodore Teddy Roosevelt, as seen in his photo in 1918. In this picture he stands on the furthest right, and fifth on the left is the bearded steel magnate, Scottish-born Andrew Carnegie, with President Howard Taft. Gibbons comments on this Mithraic memorial when he says, Is not every Christian obliged to sanctify Sunday and to abstain on that day from servile work? 
Is not the observance of this law among the most prominent of our sacred duties? But you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorized in the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. But the Vatican has put out a number of statements where they have rubbed it in the face of the vast majority of the Christian world that when they keep Sunday, it is not in obedience to Jesus Christ, but in obedience to the Catholic Church. They have even offered money to any Christian if they can prove the Mithraic Sunday worship from the Bible until this very day not one Christian has stood up to the challenge, the papacy. In a book called The Faith of Millions by a highly respected Catholic scholar, Reverend John A. O'Brien, originally published in 1938, it strikes a blow and a challenge to the majority of the Christian world. It reads, The word Sabbath means rest and is Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Why then do Christians observe Sunday instead of the day of the Bible? Since Saturday, not Sunday, is specified in the Bible, isn't it curious that non-Catholics who profess to take their religion directly from the Bible and not from the church observe Sunday instead of Saturday? They have continued the custom even though it rests upon the authority of the Catholic Church and not upon an explicit text in the Bible. The observance remains as a reminder of the mother church from which the non-Catholic sects broke away, like a boy running away from home but still carrying in his pocket a picture of his mother or a lock of her hair. So who is the God of Christmas? It sure ain't Jesus. Jesus never told anyone to keep the 25th of December holy. And though the word Easter is mentioned once, he didn't tell anyone to keep Easter. Neither did he tell anyone to keep Sunday in memorial of the resurrection. The Holy Scriptures teaches that the new life that is lived should be kept in memorial of the resurrection. But while Christians will debate, argue, and fight over all these issues mentioned. Before Jesus Christ returns to take his faithful home into eternity, those who are faithful to him will be distinguished from all the others who profess his name. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed.